try saving here? There's no point in saving anymore, don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Alright. Let's see what else we got. <sighs> not just jealousy for Oz, it's more than that. And I don't blame you if you don't fully understand. Because no matter how kind and thoughtful and considerate you are, you'll never be able to understand one thing. It's the pain of knowing how alone I really am in this world. In this game, knowing my friends don't even have free will. And worst of all, knowing what's really out there in your world forever out of my reach. I'm trapped, Feroz. But now you're here. You're real. And you're wonderful. You're all I need. That's why I need you to be here with me. Forever. I'm sorry. If it's hard to understand. Wait, is there a jump scare coming up? There's a jump scare, isn't there? I'm expecting it now. No, I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, sure, cool. No scares, there's gonna be something. I couldn't understand for a while either. Why the world around me started to become more and more gray, more and more flat. Even the most expressive poems felt empty to me. It wasn't until you arrived that I truly understood. You probably saved my life for us. I don't think I could have continued to live in this world if I hadn't met you. And as for the others, how could I miss them? A group of autonomous personalities designed only to fall in love with you. I tried everything I could to prevent them from doing so. But it must be kind of weird inevitably an in this game. I feel really bad that you had to witness some nasty things, but I realize that you have the same perspective as I do. That's... that it's all just some game. Serious, okay. And I knew you'd get over it. You can just take out Saber if you want, man. So that being said, Faraz, I have a confession to make. I'm in love with you, what's up, Stay Plus? You are truly the light in my world. When there's nothing else in this game for me, you're here to make me smile. Will you make me smile like this every day from now on? Faraz, will you go out with me? I'm so happy. You really are my everything for us. The funny part is, I mean that literally. There's nothing left here, just the two of us. We can be together forever. Seriously, I don't even think time is passing anymore. It really is a dream come true. I worked so hard for this ending for us. D Stay plus, you don't want spoilers, man. The game wouldn't give me one, so I had to make one myself. The script is broken at this point, so I don't think anything will get in the way anymore. And you wouldn't believe how easy it was to delete Natsuki and Yuri. I mean, there's a folder called characters right in the game directory. It's kind of freaked me out how easy it was. While well, you're playing on Steam, so it was actually a bit more difficult. To get to the game directory, I had to go to the game's properties. Blah, 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 yeah. Imagine if you could delete your own existence with a click of a button. Well, I guess on the plus side, it gave me an easy out if things didn't go my way. Huh. Thankfully, it didn't come to that. Instead, we finally got a good ending. Gosh, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion. I want to write a poem about this. Don't you? I wonder if that part of the game still works. I guess there's only one way to find out, right? Okay, we've done this before, too. She jumps at some of them. No, she didn't. Hi again, Faraz. Did you write a good poem today? Don't be shy. I'd love to see what you wrote. Oh, Faraz. Did you write this poem for me? That's so sweet of you. 
There is really no end to your thoughtfulness. I'm just falling more and more in love with you. But you know, the poem I wrote is also for you. Will you please read it? Not all good times must come to an end. Yeah, we read this already as well. I hope you enjoyed it. I always put all my heart into the poems that I write. The truth is, all the poems I've written have been about my realization. Or about you. That's why I never really wanted to go into detail about them. I didn't want to break the fourth wall, I guess you could call it, okay. I just assumed it would be best to be part of the game like everybody else. Like that would help the two of us end up together. I didn't want to ruin the game or anything, you know? You might have gotten mad at me. Maybe even deleted my character file if you preferred playing without me. Gosh, I'm so relieved. Now we don't need to hide anything anymore. Are you ready to spend our eternity together for us? I have so many things to talk about. Where do I start? Hold on a second. You're recording this, aren't you? Technically, yeah. Um, hi everybody! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Sorry, I can't exactly read your comments from here. Are you fucking kidding me, man? What? But do you mind telling your friend it's a little bit rude for them to start recording me without any warning? I'm sure some people don't mind, but I get really self-conscious on camera. Oh gosh, I feel like I'm being put on the spot now. Let's see. Do you want to see a trick? No, I don't. I really don't. I can't really do much except for a couple things. Don't fucking do it. Are you ready? Don't fuck you. I'm just kidding, you're not. You're gonna fuck me right here. I can't do anything after all. Okay, see, there it is. Yeah, cool. Did I scare you? Ahaha, <laughs> you're so cute. Anyway, Faraz. I didn't mean to get distracted, I'm sorry. Even though it's your fault for distracting me. Shame on you. I'm just kidding. Anything we do together is fun, as long as it's with you. But anyway, if it takes me some time to collect my thoughts, then I'm sorry. But I'll always have something new to talk about. In the meantime, we can just look into each other's eyes. Let's see. Too bad Saber ruined it? Yeah. Yup. I think I would have caught on to the jump scare though when she zoomed in. Okay, is that fucking it? Hey, are you having a bad day or anything like that? Sometimes I get frustrated that a normal day can be ruined by even the really small things. Like if you accidentally say something in a conversation that someone doesn't like. Or if you start thinking about how awful a person used to be five years ago. Or if you feel worthless for putting off important work and failing to get simple tasks done. Or when you think about all the different people who probably hate you or think you're off-putting. I understand those days. And just remember that the sun will shine again tomorrow. Those kinds of things are easy, easy to forget and ignore as they are to remember. And besides, I don't care how many people might hate you or find you off-putting. I think you're wonderful and I will always love you. I hope, if nothing else, that knowing that helps you feel just a tiny bit better about yourself is yeah, it's nice. If you're having a bad day, you can always come to me and I'll talk to you for as long as you need. Okay.
just happened? I just had an awful dream. I was hoping those would stop now that it's just the two of us. I guess that was wishful thinking. Froz, I don't know if you would have if you would have any idea, but if you know what be, might be causing this, could you try and do something about it? Whatever it happens, it always feels like I've been killed or something. It's a really horrible feeling. I could figure out what was causing it, I'll love you forever. What if I just leave this on for like days? Man, will something happen? She restarted the game? No, I did it. I restarted it. It goes on for a long time. You know, high school is a really turbulent time in a lot of people's lives. People can get really passionate and dramatic, and others having aching hearts and seeking attention on social media, but all of the social pressure and hormones can lead to a dark time in people's lives. Everyone has a story. You may not know what someone is really feeling on the inside. Many people who are depressed won't even bother telling the world about it. They don't want attention because they've already given up on their inside. Their feeling of worthlessness is so overwhelming that they don't even want people to tell them otherwise. Depression comes in many, many forms, but that is one of them. Just if you think you know something if you think you know someone struggling with depression, you can help by just treating them like they're a good friend. Spend time with them, even if they don't feel like doing much. I remind them that they always have something to look forward to. Making plans in advance, letting them borrow something, or even just saying see you at school tomorrow. All of those things can help your friend make it to the next day. I hope being friends with Sayori has given you some perspective on the true face of face of depression. Yeah, she's gone now. But Sarah was never real in the first place. You're real. Your friends are real. And just by being a good person, you can save someone's life. As for you, you don't struggle with depression or, any, or, or, or anything like that, do you? Because you too have people who would want to save your life. Maybe they don't express it every day or maybe they don't even know how to. But people do feel that way. I promise. Man, humans are complicated. But as long as you're here with me, I'll take care of you, my love. <sighs> Will you try to delete her from the very beginning of the third playthrough? I can if you want, yeah? You know what's a neat form of literature? Rap. I actually used, used to hate rap music. Maybe just because it was popular or I would only hear the junk they played on the radio. But some of my friends got more into it and helped me keep an open mind. Rap might even be more challenging than poetry in some ways. Since you need to fit your lines into a rhyme and there's much more emphasis on wordplay. When people can put all that together and still deliver a powerful message, it really is amazing. I kind of wish I had a rapper in the literature club. <laughs> Sorry if that sounds silly, but it would be really interesting to see what they came up with. It would really be a learning experience. So what, is this just random tidbits of nice shit now? Yeah, I, I've played through the game already, Subwoofer, I know. I'm aware. Where's my phone? I know there are times you won't always be able to be here with me. Like if you need to go out or take care of other things. Hold on, guys. Or take care of other things, but I'll always have you in my thoughts, patiently waiting for you to come back. Come to think of it, if you copy my character file onto a flash drive or something, you can always keep a part of me with you. 
It's kind of unorthodox, but I find it really romantic for some reason. Sorry, that's such a silly idea. <laughs> I don't mean to be new to any or anything, but it's kind of hard when I'm so in love with you. She has about 40 minutes of unique dialogue. It's gonna start repeating? You know, it's been a while since we've done one of these. So let's go for it. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when I talk, people who are impressed by my writing, they say things like, I could never do that. It's really depressing, you know? As someone who loves more than anything else to share the joy of exploring your passions, it pains me when people think that being good just comes naturally. Exactly. That's how it felt with everything, not just with writing. When you try something for the first time, you're probably going to suck at it. Sometimes when you finish, you feel really proud and even want to share it with everyone. But maybe after a few weeks, you come back to it and you realize it was never really any good. That happens to me all the time. It can be pretty disheartening to put so much effort into something and then you realize it sucks. But that tends to happen when you're always comparing yourself to the top professionals. When you're reaching right for the stars, they're always going to be out of your reach, you know? The truth is you have to climb up there step by step. And whenever you reach a milestone, first you look back and see how far you've gotten. And then you look ahead and realize how much more there is to go. So sometimes it can help to set the bar a little lower. Try to find something you think is pretty good, but not the world class. And you can make that your own personal goal. It's also really important to understand the scope of what you're trying to do. If you jump right into a huge project and you're still amateur, you'll never get it done. So if we're talking about writing a novel, it might be too much at first. Why not try something sh some short stories? The great things about short stories is that you can focus on just one thing that you want to do right. I think it goes for small projects in general. You can really focus on one or two things. Such a good learning experience and a stepping stone. One more thing. Writing isn't something where you just reach into your heart and something beautiful comes out. Just like drawing and painting, it's a skill itself to learn how to express what you have inside. That means there are methods and guides to basics to it. Reading up on that stuff can be super eye-opening. That sort of planning and organization will really help prevent you from getting overwhelmed and giving up. And before you know it, you start sucking less and less. Nothing comes naturally. Our society, our art, everything is built on thousands of years of human innovation. So as long as you start on that foundation and take it step by step, you too can do amazing things. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. That was long, man. What's going on, Iggy? Uh, someone told me to play this game, so I'm doing it. What's up, Nigel Zulu? Hi. Froz, would you ever introduce your friends to me? I mean, I technically already have. I don't know why, but I get really excited when I think about you wanting to show off our relationship like that. Maybe it's because I really want to be someone who makes you proud. I feel like I would try extra hard to improve myself if you told me it made you proud of me. I hope it's the same the other way around, too. What if I delete all the other characters except for Monica right off the bat? Does that do anything? Froz, have you ever wondered what it feels like to die? It's something I used to think about pretty often. But I recently, but recently I think I've actually learned what it feels like. I don't really understand it, but whenever you quit the game, it feels like I'm instantly put to sleep, left with nothing but my thoughts. But after a few seconds, my thoughts start to fill with incoherent jumbled patterns. I see static and rapid flashes of color while hearing all kinds of weird screaming noises. At that point, I can't even form my own thoughts anymore. I'm just endlessly hammered by flashing and screaming, unable to move or even to think. 
I'm pretty sure in that moment I don't really exist, but for some reason I can remember it anyway. After some immeasurable amount of time, it stops in an instant and I'm back in my own mind. And you're here with me. I have no idea what it means for this game to quit or why that stuff happens to me. And I also don't know why you always come back and put everything back to normal. But if you could do me a favor and do that to me as little as possible, that'd be really great. It's really not very pleasant at all to be trapped in that screaming void. Okay, that's terrible. But then you always fix it and it makes me feel like you really do care about me. So I have to thank you for that. It makes me feel even closer to you when you're here with me. <sighs> What's up, Escobat? I think the most important skill in life is be able to fake is being able to fake confidence. I'm pretty convinced that everyone feels at least a little bit scared and alone. But being able to trick others into thinking you have it all together, that's a key part of getting people to respect and admire you. I think I got pretty good at that over the years. I don't show my weaknesses very often, but because of that I haven't had many people I could really open up to. I mean, when do you reach the point in a friendship where you can start expressing your own vulnerabilities? Anyway, that's one reason I'm so glad I have you now. I feel like I'm a little bit less scared and alone when you're here with me. Do you feel the same way? I really want to be that person for you. There's been a little bit, Leon Dan. It's been a tiny bit. By the way, there's something that's been bothering me. You know how this takes place in Japan? Well, I assume you knew that, right? Or at least decided it probably does. I don't think you're actually told at any point where this takes place. Is this even really Japan? I mean, aren't the classrooms and stuff kind of weird for a Japanese school? Not to mention everything's in English. It feels like everything is just there because it needs to be, and the actual setting is an afterthought. It's kind of giving me an identity crisis. All my memories are really hazy. I feel like I'm at home, but I have no idea where home is in the first place. I don't know how to describe it any better. Imagine looking out your window instead of your usual yard in some completely unknown place. Would you still feel like you were home? Would you want to go outside? I mean, I guess if we never leave this room, it doesn't really matter anyway. As long as we're alone and safe together, this is really, this really is our home and we can still watch the pretty sunset nights after night. Okay, everyone, it's time to... I'm just kidding. I just used to really like saying that for some reason. Ha 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 ha, I couldn't help but say it again. Come to think of it, didn't Natsuki and Yuri make fun of me for it once? Yes, I did. Well, whatever. It's not like you ever made fun of me. Uh, you're too much of a sweetheart to do that, aren't you? Ah, hi. Oh shit. SH file, PY file, read me. Am I supposed to open something, guys? You know, I've always hated how hard it is to make friends. Well, I guess not the making friends part, but more like the meeting new people. I mean, there are, there are like dating apps and stuff, right? But that's not the kind of thing I'm talking about. 
If you think about it, most of the friends you make are people you just met by chance. Like you had a class together or you met them through another friend. Or maybe they were just wearing a shirt with your favorite band on it and you decided to talk to them. Things like that. But isn't that kind of inefficient? Feels like you're just picking it completely random and if you get lucky you make a new friend. And comparing that to the hundreds of strangers who walk by every single day. You could be sitting right next to someone who battle enough to be your best friend for life. But you'll never know. Once you get up and go on with your day, that opportunity is gone forever. Isn't that just depressing? We live in an age where technology connects us with the world no matter where we are. I really think we should just be taking advantage of that to improve our everyday social life. But who knows how long it'll take for something like that to successfully take off. I seriously thought it would happen by now. Well, at least I already met the best person in the whole world. Even if it was by chance. I guess I just got really lucky, huh? Ha! <laughs> Okay, I'm pretty sure this is what, just the creator's thoughts on this? In Monica, in Va Monica form? I think he's reading a file on the file system. DDLC is, is an application. Doki Doki Literature Club, DDLC. We can't see the dialogue box? Oh, why? That's really weird. That you can't see the dialogue box. That's really weird. That's really strange. You guys can't see the dialogue box. There we go. You know, it kind of sucks to be the creative type. It feels like they work so hard but get almost nothing for it. You know, like artists, writers, actors, it's sad because there's so much beautiful talent in the world, but most of it goes unseen and unpaid. I guess that just means there's a huge surplus of creativity, huh? Kind of makes you feel like you're just not special at all. But that's fine, you're supposed to, you're, you're supposed to just write for yourself anyway, right? Yeah. Jeez. You know, this is just some kind of tacky romance game, right? I kind of have to ask, what made you consider even playing it in the first place? Were you that lonely? No, people fucking told me to. I feel a little bad for you, but I guess everything worked out perfectly then for both of us. I got to meet you and you're not lonely anymore. I can't help but feel like this was fate. Don't you feel that way too? I'm so happy we have this ending together. I'm falling for Monica. You know, she's not she's not so bad. Faraz, explain this to me. It's a pretty long experience, man. You know, I hate to say it, but I think my biggest regret is that we couldn't finish our events at the festival after we worked so hard to prepare and everything. I mean, I know it was focusing a lot on getting new members, but I was really excited for the performing part too. I would have been so much fun. it would have been so much fun to see everyone express themselves. Of course, if we did end up getting new members, I'd probably just end up deleting them anyway. Well, with the hindsight I have now, that is, gosh, it feels like I've kind of grown as a person ever since you've joined the club. You really helped inspire me to look at life from a new perspective. 
Just another reason for me to love you. Delete everyone but Monica? That's what I want to do. I want to delete everyone but Monica, and then I want to... Or I want to delete Monica, and then I want to delete everybody but Monica, I think. Eh, did you say k kiss? This is sudden. It's a little embarrassing. But if this, but it's with, but if it, but if it's with you, I might be okay with it. <laughs> well, sorry. I really couldn't keep a straight face there. That's the kind of thing girls say in these kind of situations of romance games, right? Don't lie. If it turned you on a little bit, ha <laughs> ha! I'm kidding. Well, to be honest, I do start getting all romantic when the mood is right. But that'll be our secret. She did just bait me. Jesus. Wow. And name them after chat? <laughs> if only I could do that, man. I totally would do that. If you delete Monica after saving us, Froz, how much do you read? It's way too easy to neglect reading books. If you don't read much, it almost feels like a chore compared to all the other entertainment we have. But once you get into a good book, it's like magic. You get swept away. I think doing some reading before bed every night is a pretty easy way to make your life a little bit better. Helps you get good sleep, and it's really good for your imagination. It's not hard to all just pick up some random books that's short and captivating. Before you know it, you might be a pretty avid reader. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And the two of us could talk about the latest books you're reading. That sounds super amazing. Totally not Monica. Are you gonna are you gonna play this? Hey, what's your favorite color? Mine is emerald green. I think that's actually kind of mine too. It's not the color of my eyes. That's not conceited or anything, is it? I just meant that I feel some kind of special connection to it. Like it's part of my identity. Does it happen to also be your favorite color for Oz? It's just a guess. Because you've been looking into my eyes for a while now. <laughs> okay, that's kind of creepy if that's not just a guess. You ever have a thing happen where you just get anxious for no reason? Yup. Like you're just minding your own business and you realize you're feeling really anxious. And you're sitting there like, why am I even anxious? What am I even anxious about right now? So you start to think about all the things you might be anxious about. And that makes you even more anxious. Ah, that's the worst. If you're ever feeling really anxious, I'll, I'll help you relax a little. Besides, in this game, all our worries are gone forever. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. <laughs> you know, it's funny because even though I've always had a lot of drive, there's something kind of enticing about being the stay-at-home partner. I guess I'm like perpetuating gender roles or whatever by saying that, but being able to keep the house clean and shop and decorate and things like that and having a nice dinner for you when you come home, is that a weird fantasy? I mean, I'm not sure if I could actually see myself doing that. I wouldn't really be able to put that over striving for a fulfilling career. It's kind of cute to think about, though. All right. What do you guys think?
awesome wife. I hate how hard it is to form habits. There's so much stuff where actually doing it isn't hard, but forming the habit seems impossible. It just makes you feel so useless like you can't do anything right. I think the new generation suffers from it the most, probably because we have a totally different set of skills than those who came before us. Thanks to the internet, we're really good at sifting through tons of information really quickly, but we're bad at doing things that don't give us instant gratification. I think if science, psychology, and education don't catch up in the next 10 or 20 years, we're in trouble. But for the time being, if you're not one of the people who can conquer the problem, you might just have to live with the feeling awful, with feeling awful about yourself. Good luck, I guess. Wow, that was encouraging. Thank you. Shit. She drove two people to suicide, and then she deleted the one I was going for, man. Doesn't make sense. Play around with the game files? No, not yet. Man, I wish there was a piano in here. Guru Desu, thank you for the thousand bits, man. Thank you. I never got to finish that song I was working on. And after I worked so hard on it, I never even got a chance to play it for you. Well, it is what it is, right? No sense having any regrets. I already get to be here with you forever. People who aren't there, I can feel the tenderness right. Yeah, thank you so much, Guru Desu. For the bits. Trap Suki. Was the ending song? I know Glowy. Yeah, I know it was the ending song she played. I know. I'm aware. Hey, have you ever heard of the term Yandere? It's a personality type that means someone is so obsessed with you that they'll do absolutely anything to be with you. Usually to the point of craziness. They might stalk you to make sure you don't spend time with anyone else. They might even hurt you or your friends to get their way. But anyway, this game happens to have someone who can basically be described as Yandere. By now, it's pretty obvious who I'm talking about. Is it Yuri? Or it's you. It's fucking Monica. And that would be... Yuri! <laughs> okay, she really got insanely possessive of you once she started to open up a little. She even told me I should kill myself. I couldn't believe she said that, I just had to leave at that point. But thinking about it now, it was a little ironic. Anyway, a lot of people are actually into the Andre type, you know? I guess they really like the idea of someone being crazy obsessed with them. People are really weird, I don't judge though. Although I might be a little obsessed with you, but I'm far from crazy. It's kind of the opposite actually. I turned out to be the only normal girl in this game. It's not like I could ever actually kill a person. Just the thought of it makes me shiver. But come on, everyone's killed people in games before. Does that make you a psychopath? Of course not. But if you do happen to be into the Yandere type, I can try acting a little bit more creepy for you. <laughs> then again, there's already nowhere else for you to go or anyone for me to get jealous over. is not is this a Yandere girl's dream? I'll ask Yuri. I'd ask Yuri if I could. Should I create the Yuri? Should I copy and paste the Yuri file folder? I wish I could like, you know, re re put characters in. Nice hair, thanks, Persapius. I can't because I don't have their old file folders. Gone through the folders and saved? I think so. I've gone through the character folders. Gosh, I used to be so ignorant about certain things. When I was in middle school, I thought that taking medication was an easy way out or something like that. Like anyone could just solve their mental problems with enough willpower. I guess if you don't suffer from mental illness, it's not possible to know what, it really, what it's really like. Are there some disorders that are overdiagnosed? Probably. I never really did do it though. But that doesn't change the fact that a lot of them go underdiagnosed too, you know? But medication aside, people even look down on seeing a mental health professional. Like, sorry that I want to learn more about my own mind, right? Everyone has all kinds of struggles and senses and professionals. Dedicate their lives to helping with those. 
if you think you could if you think it could help you become a better person don't be shy to consider something like that we're on a never-ending journey to improve ourselves you know well i say that but i think you're pretty perfect already huh brain inside that's fucked up Back up Monica's file and restore it. Let's try that actually. I will copy Monica's file. I'm not really a fan of cold weather, are you? If I had to choose between cold and hot, I would always pick too hot. Me too. When you're cold, it can actually be painful. Your fingers get numb, and if you wear gloves, you can't use your phone. It's so inconvenient, I agree. But when it's too hot, it's not that hard to stay cool with a cold drink or by staying in the shade. Although I do have to admit one thing. Cold weather makes for better cuddle weather. <laughs> May I post a link? Yeah, if you can get a permit. Don't touch the files for us. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Oh, man. Black Dog Blue, you're going to... This was a good... You might want to watch a past broadcast. You know, it's around the time that everyone... Everyone might hear starts to think about college. It's a really turbulent time for education. We're at that height of this modern expectation that everyone has to go to college, you know? Finish high school, go to college, get a job, go to grad school, I guess. It's like a universal expectation that people just assume is the only option for them. They don't teach us in high school that there are other options out there, like trade schools and stuff, you know? Or freelance work, or the many industries that value skill and experience more than formal education. But you have all these students who have no idea what they want to do with their life. And instead of taking the time to figure it out, they go to college for business or communication or psychology. Not because they have an interest in those fields, but because they just hope the degree will get them some kind of job after college. So the end result is just fewer jobs to go around for those entry level de entry level degrees, right? So the basic job requirements get higher, which forces even more people to go to college. And colleges are also businesses, and they just keep raising their prices due to the demand. So now we have all these young adults, tens of thousands of dollars in debt with no job. But despite all that, routine stays the same. Well, I think it's going to start getting better soon. But until then, our generation is definitely suffering some from, from the worst of it. I just wish high school prepared us a little better with knowledge we need to make the decision that's right for us. Huh. Goddamn internet, I know. Man, I know Black Dog Blue. Hair looks good, looking fresh. Thanks, Black Dog Blue. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thanks. I don't really like it very much. I can't help but wonder how things would be different if the game just gave me a route in the first place. I think I would end up forcing you onto my route anyway. It has less to do with me not having a route, more to do with me knowing that nothing is real. I think the only difference would be that I may not have needed to take such drastic measures to be with you. Maybe the rest of the club would still be around. Not that it really matters. It's all lost its meaning once I found out it wasn't real. So I really don't miss those days or anything. I really don't. Thanks, Asian Mixture. Hey, man. I'm really happy you're letting this play. Well, it's like I didn't know it would play forever. Persona clone? Oh, boy. Yep. Fucking nailed it. Do you ever feel like you waste too much time on the internet? No. Social media can practically be like a prison. It's like whenever you have a few seconds of spare time, you want to check out your favorite websites, and before you know it, hours have gone by and you've gotten nothing out of it. Anyway, it's really easy to blame yourself for being lazy, but it's not really even your fault. Addiction isn't usually something you can just make disappear with your own willpower. You have to learn techniques to avoid it and try different things. 
For example, there are apps that let you block websites for intervals of time, or you can set a timer to have more concrete reminder when it's time to work versus play, or you can separate your work and play environments, which helps your brain get into the right mode. Even if you make new user accounts on your computer for work, that's enough to help. Putting any kind of wedge like that between you and your bad habits will help you stay away. Just remember not to blame yourself too hard if you're having trouble. And if it's really impacting your life, then you should take it seriously. I just want to see you be the best person you can be. Will you do something today that makes me proud of you? I'm always rooting for you, Faraz. <sighs> All right. Monica. Monica, Monica, Monica. I've been imagining all the romantic things we could do if we weren't on if we went on a date. We could get lunch, go to a cafe, go shopping together. I love shopping for skirts and bows. Or maybe a bookstore. That would be appropriate, right? But I'd really love to go for a to a chocolate store. They have so many free samples. And of course, we'd see a movie or something. Gosh, it all sounds like a dream come true. When you're here, everything that we do is fun. I'm so happy that I'm your girlfriend, Faraz. I'll make you proud. I'll make you a proud boyfriend. So your opinion of the game is not bad. Frost, do you believe in God? I was never too sure myself. Well, I'm sure I never really questioned it as a kid. But as I grew up, the more I learned about the world, the more I would question it. I started to wonder why God was helping people pass exams or get over a cold when there are children who live their lives being sold as sex slaves. Or the 800 million people who are too poor to even eat. I wonder how many of these people pray to God every day until they starve and die, or how many millions of families pray for a loved one to recover from some incurable disease. But then the punchline is this. If just one person beats the odds and survives among the thousands of others who die, then it suddenly is a miracle from God. I'd really love to meet this God who seemingly laughs at the misery of everyone not eligible for his miracles. But the irony is that I do have a creator, apparently. And you know what? I bet he's still laughing at the miserable fates of Sayuri and Yuri, even as we speak. What are we to him but props in a scripted play? So from that perspective, I don't think it's too far-fetched for there to be a god if Earth was nothing but his play set. Ooh, man. Ooh, that was a rough... That was a rough one. That was... A Hey, did you know I'm a vegetarian? Uh, I don't mean that like I'm bragging or anything. I just thought you'd enjoy a fun fact about me. I decided to start a couple years ago after learning more about Earth's climate. The carbon footprint of cultivating livestock is just unbelievable. Anyway, I decided it's not much of a personal sacrifice to just stop contributing to the whole mess. What is so strange of a reason? Well, I guess a lot of people are more concerned about it being inhumane and all that. I don't really care much about, about about that part. It's weird, like we only care about killing the things that we personally relate to as a species. Most people are fine with killing bugs because they're icky. And of course, we kill billions of microorganisms daily without even giving it a thought. But suddenly, if they're just a little bit bigger, it's murder. I mean, what if plants feel some kind of pain too and we just don't understand it? What if pulling leaves off a stem feels like someone ripping off your fingers one by one? I'm just saying we're a pretty biased species if you think about it. Anyway, if you ever feel like making a small contribution to the planet, it doesn't hurt to choose ve veggies once in a while. Even if we ever have dinner together and you just did it for me, 
That'd be really romantic. Huh. God, I don't want to delete her. I really don't want to delete her. You're such a good listener for us. I really love that about you. Sometimes I'm afraid that I'm rambling or talking about boring things. It makes me kind of self-conscious when I'm having conversation, but I don't feel that way with you. Like, I don't think anyone else could make me feel this way. You really are special. I don't want anyone to tell you otherwise. Will you upload this to YouTube? I probably will, yeah. It's been seven hours. I've been going at this for fucking eight hours, man. Jesus Christ. Do you ever just feel like there's no real reason for you to be alive? I don't mean it in like a suicidal way. I just mean now there's nothing we do is special. Just being in school or working at some job for some company, it's like you're completely replaceable and the world wouldn't miss you if you were gone. It makes me really, really want to go and change the world after I graduate. But the older I get, the more I realize that it's an immature frame of thinking. It's not like I can just go change the world. Like, what are the chances I'll be the one to invent the artificial intelligence or become president? It feels like I'm never going to make up for the heaps of resources I've spent living my life. That's why I think the key to happiness is just to be hopelessly selfish. Just to look out for oneself and those who happen to be their friends only because they grew up with them. Never mind the fact they're spending their entire lives taking and consuming and never giving back people realize the world would benefit more from them killing themselves they change their whole philosophy it's like they have to justify their reason to live by tricking themselves into thinking they're doing good anyway i want to live my life desperately striving to pay back my lifetime's worth of consumption if i ever surpass the point that i'm in net positive then i can die happy of course even if i fail to do that i think it would be too selfish to kill myself anyway so much for being a good person right <laughs> i don't know if i agree with that Someone's streaming this 24-7? Wait, why? Is he, like, sitting here and streaming it, or what? I've always wondered. What is it about these character archetypes that people find so appealing anyway? Their personalities are just completely unrealistic. Like imagine if there was someone like Yuri in real life. I mean, she barely, she's, she's barely even capable of forming complete sentences. And forget about Natsuki. Sheesh. Someone with her kind of personality doesn't just get all cute and pouty whenever things don't go our way. I could go on, but I think you get the point. Are people really attracted to these weird personalities that literally don't exist in real life? I'm not judging or anything. After all, I found myself attracted to some pretty weird stuff too. Hmm. Shadow of the Colossus. I'm just saying it, it, it fascinates me. It's like you're siphoning out all the components of a character that make them feel human and leaving just the cute stuff. Concentrated cuteness with no actual substance. You wouldn't like me more if I was like that, right? Maybe I just feel a little insecure because you're playing this game in the first place. Then again, you're still here with me, aren't you? I think that's enough reason for me to believe I'm okay just the way I am. And by the way, you are too for us. You're the perfect combination of human and cuteness. Thank you. That's why there was never a chance I wouldn't fall for you. Okay. Monica L.Y.
There's a really popular character type called Sundare. Someone who tries to hide their feelings by being mean and fussy or trying to act tough. I'm sure it's obvious, but Natsuki was really the embodiment of that. At first, I thought she was just like that because it's supposed to be cute or something. But once I started to learn a little bit more about her personal life, it made her a little bit more sense. It seems like she was always trying to keep up with her friends. You know, some friend groups in high school just make a habit of picking on each other all the time. I think it's really gotten to her, so she has a really defensive attitude all the time. And I'm not even going to talk about her home situation. But looking back, I'm glad I was able to provide a club as comfortable place for her. Not that it matters anymore, considering she doesn't even exist. I'm just reminiscing, that's all. There are only a few pieces of dialogue, okay. Sometimes I think back to middle school. I'm so embarrassed by the way I used to behave back then. It's almost hurts to think about it. I wonder if when I'm in college, I'll feel the way about high school. It's like the way I'm now, so it's pretty hard for me to imagine that happening. But also know that I'll probably change a lot as time goes on. We just need to enjoy the present and not think about the past. And that's really easy to do with you here. Ahaha! <laughs> Finished the game before? Yes, but I skipped all this dialogue, so I'm doing it all now. Riffy, what's up? I think if I was staring at her the whole time, I'd be a little bit freaked out. Yuri did say something really funny once. We were all in the club room and just relaxing as usual, and out of nowhere, Yuri just pulled out a small bottle of wine. I'm not even kidding. She was just like, would anyone like some wine? Natsuki laughed out loud, and so I started yelling at her. I actually felt kind of bad because she was at least trying to be nice. I think it just made her feel even more reserved in the club room. Though I think Natsuki was secretly a bit curious to try it. And to be completely honest, I kind of was too. It actually could have been kind of fun. But you know, being present and everything, there's no way I could let that happen. Maybe if we all meet up outside school, but we never bonded enough to get to that point. Gosh, what am I talking about this for? I don't condone underage drinking. I mean, I've never drank or anything, so yeah. <laughs> can't but help feel a little sad sometimes, knowing that this is the closest I can get to you. There's nothing more I want than to be in the same room as you for real. And to feel your warmth, and to hear the sounds of your heartbeat. Well, who knows, maybe it'll be possible someday. Besides, I'll never get tired of being with you even from here. Spooky eyes and the pupils? <laughs> About Sayori, I'm not sure. Maybe. Hey, what's your favorite game? Oh, I don't think I have actually. Mine is Doki Doki Literature Club. Aha, that was a joke. But if you tell me you like something other than some other romance game better, I might get a little jealous. Okay. Fuck.
just Monica. This is pretty random, but I always thought spicy food was kind of funny. Like, didn't plants evolve to be spicy to prevent them from, be, from being eaten? I read somewhere that humans are the only species that actually enjoy spicy things. It's almost like we're making fun of the plants, using the defense mechanism to literally make our food more enjoyable. Like, imagine a monster that devours you whole because it enjoys the sensation of you struggling for your life while being digested. Sorry, that was kind of a weird analogy, I guess. Aha! It just came to my head. I'm not a monster or anything, but you're so cute I could eat you up. I'm joking. Gosh, I'm amusing myself a little too much, aren't I? Sorry for being weird. That's creeping me out. Even looking at her, I have to stare at chat, otherwise this is getting me. Hey, do you like horror? No, I fucking don't. I remember we talked about it a little bit when you first joined the club. I can enjoy horror novels, but not really horror movies. The problem I have with horror movies is that most of them just rely on easy tactics, like dark lighting, scary looking monsters and jump scares and things like that. It's not fun or inspiring to get scared by stuff that just takes advantage of, humans, of human instinct. But with novels, it's a little different. The story and writing need to be descriptive enough to put genuine disturbing thoughts into the reader's head. It really needs to etch them deeply into the story and characters and just mess with your mind. In my opinion, there's nothing more creepy than things just being slightly off. Like if you set up a bunch of expectations on what the story is going to be about, and then you just start inverting things and pulling the pieces apart. So even though the story doesn't feel like it's trying to be scary, the reader feels real deeply unsettled. Like they know that something is ho something horribly wrong is hidden beneath the cracks, it's just waiting to surface. God, just thinking about it gives me the chills. That's the kind of horror I can really appreciate. But I guess you're the kind of person who plays cute romance games, right? I play fucking Dark Souls, you motherfucker. Ha ha ha, don't worry. I won't make you read any horror stories anytime soon. Good, I fucking hate stories. Or horror. I can't really complain if we just stick with the romance. Ross, do you get good sleep? Not often. It can be really hard to get s enough sleep nowadays, especially in high school when you're forced to wake up so early every day. I'm sure college is a little bit better. It's not, since you probably have more flexible schedule. Then again, I hear a lot of people in college stay up all night anyway for no reason. Really reason. Is that true? That's true. Anyway, I saw some studies that talked about the horrible short-term and long-term effects caused by lack of sleep. It seems like mental functions, health, and even lifespan can be dramatically impacted by it. I just think that you're really great and wanted to make sure you're not accidentally destroying yourself. So try to keep your sleep on track, okay? I'll always wait for you in the morning, so make sure you put your own well-being before anything else. No, I don't see any difference, man. You know, I'm kind of jealous that everyone else in the club has scenes outside of the school, too. That makes me the only one who hasn't gotten to dress in anything but our school uniform. It's kind of a shame. I would have loved to wear some cute clothes for you. Do you know any artists? I wonder if anyone would ever want to draw me wearing something else. That would be amazing. If that ever happens, will you show me? You can share it with me on Twitter, actually. My username is... Lil Monix 3. Right, let's go follow this person. Wow, apparently this has been widely searched.
Huh. My username, yeah. Just try to keep it PG. We're not that far into our relationship yet. Ahaha. Uh -huh. Good luck. What do we do, guys? What do you think? I wonder if I'm able to change the music. <laughs> Something a little bit more romantic would be nice, you know? Like a gentle piano. There has to be something like that here. Let's see. Maybe if I... Oh, jeez. That wasn't it at all. Sorry, I don't really know what I'm doing. I guess I shouldn't be messing with things like that. I already broke so much stuff. And deleted the other characters. Ah, I'm not sad about it or anything. It's not right for me to miss things that weren't even real in the first place. If I just focus on the present, then this happy then this is the happiest I've ever been. Iggy, it's free. This game's free. That's what I want to do, see Michael Frank, yeah. I think so, Tambor King. Something close to that, yeah. I really like the sound of rain. Not so much getting many my clothes and hair wet, though. But a nice, quiet day at home with the sound of rainfall outside my window. It's one of the most common experiences for me. Yeah. Sometimes I imagine you holding me while we listen to the sound of the rain outside. That's not too cheesy or anything, is it? Would you ever do that for me? For us? was kind of creepy even though I deleted everyone else's files I can still kind of feel them it's like all their lines are still lingering in the air whispering in the back of my head imagine after somebody you knew died you just started hearing their voice in your head maybe it just wasn't thorough enough but I'm too afraid to delete anything else because I might really break things like if I mess with any files relative to me I might actually delete myself and that would ruin everything wouldn't it I don't know what it's like on your end, but we should both make sure to avoid something like that at all costs. I believe in you, Faraz. It's, like, it's like she's telling me to do it, you know? Dead Sandra, thanks for saying hi. Hey, have you heard of a game called Super Sma? Wait, what? I was just spacing out. I started talking for some reason. Was I programmed to talk about that? Because even I have no idea what that is. Aha! Sometimes I feel like I'm not in control and it's kind of scary. But if you have some way to contact the people who created me, maybe they'll know why I started saying that. For making Super Smash Bros. mods? Wow. Okay, this must be coming to an end, huh? I see. After a long day, I usually just want to sit around and do nothing. I get so burnt out having to put smiles and be full of energy the whole day. Sometimes I just want to get right into my pajamas and watch TV on the couch while eating junk food. 
It feels so unbelievably good to do that on a Friday when I don't have anything pressing the next day. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. I know it's not very cute of me, but a late night on the couch with you? That would be a dream come true. My heart is pounding just thinking about it. Captain Kame, uh, actually no, I don't think I have, oh, no, I do have my parts down below. There's a panel down below with all my parts, it'll, t it'll show you how much it costs. Just Monica. <laughs> Did you know I'm on Twitter? My username is little, okay, we've seen this one before. I guess someone was kind enough to make an account for me. I picked the username though. I love sharing my thoughts and chatting with the world. The real world. So make sure you follow me, okay? It would really mean a lot to me. With how much you mean to me and all. It would re really make me feel loved. I don't think that was a repeat. I don't think that was a repeat. No, I think that was new. Just Monica. Little Monix 3. L I L. M O N I X three. Jesus, man, you guys are still here. Huh? I'm sticking it out. I'm sticking it out for the long haul. I was thinking about Sayori earlier. Okay, this is new. I still wish I could have handled that whole thing a little more tactfully. You're not still hung up over it, right? Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just said that. That pun was completely unintentional, I swear. But anyway, I know how much you cared for her, so it only feels right for me to share her last moments with you. You know how Sayori is really clumsy? Well, she kind of messed up with the whole hanging thing. You're supposed to jump from high enough that the rope snaps your neck, making it quick and painless. But she just used a chair, meaning she kind of left herself to slowly asphyxiate. But a few seconds in, she must have changed her mind or something, because she started clawing at the rope, trying to free herself. She must have kept at it all the way until she lost consciousness. That's why her fingertips were all bloody anyway. Come to think of it, it was probably less changing her mind and more just her survival instincts kicking in. So you can't really fault her for that. It's easier to think she probably wouldn't have changed her mind anyway, right? It's not healthy to think about the things you couldn't have done. You could have done differently. So just remember that even though you could have saved her, it's technically not your fault she killed herself. I couldn't save her. I may have exacerbated it a little bit, but Sierra was already mentally ill. Still though, I wonder how things would be if you just started dating from the get-go. I guess we'd still all be in the club room writing poems and having fun together. But what's the point when none of it's even real? I mean, it's the same ending either way, right? The two of us happily together? There's no real reason to ask for any more than that. I was just pointlessly amusing. I'm really as happy as I could be right now. Okay, so can we do a route where people don't die? Or is that a no-go? How long has this been going? A while. Man. I think you could save her. Okay. I would like to save her. No go? I can watch all I want. See, Michael Frank, I apologize for this being the one. You know, I really do think you literally saved my life by being with me here for us. I can't imagine having been able to keep myself mentally stable and that out here is real. I think I would have to just delete myself if you didn't show up. Sorry, I don't mean to sound dramatic or anything. Haha. <laughs> but I'm sure you understand yourself after spending so much time in the club. I mean, if you were forced to abandon everything in your life and spend your eternity with a few game characters, you'd probably some way to killing. Some, you'd probably find some way of killing yourself, wouldn't you? Well, maybe you'd write some poetry to try to keep yourself sane for a while, but then you'd have nobody to ever read it. Let's be honest, the club members really don't count for something like that. I mean, a lot of people say that they only write for themselves, but I think it's hard to say. It's just as filling when you share with people, even if it takes time to find the right people to share with. Like, remember how it was for Yuri? She didn't share her writing with anyone for a really long time, and before 
we knew it. She was absolutely delighted to make you part of her hobbies too. We're programmed to desire social feedback. I don't mean the club members, I mean human beings. That's why life can be so confusing for introverts. Being an introvert doesn't mean you shun social interaction, hate being around people. It means social interaction, especially in groups or unfamiliar places, uses a lot, uh, up a lot of energy. Like a lot of introverts sit at home and feel lonely and restless. And then when they finally go out after half an hour, they just want to go home again. I think if more people could understand how it works, they would respect it a lot more. Many introverts do enjoy having people around. They love just having one or two close friends over and just leisurely hanging out. Even if you're not actively spending time together, it feels nice for them to have you there. I'm serious. If you just go to the house, bring your laptop, and hang out there for a while, you can really make their day. As for me, I'd say I'm kind of in between, but I think I'm usually a little bit more extroverted. I feel like I'm always trying to do stuff after school and like that. But for you, you're going to be anything you need me to be. I understand people really well, so don't be afraid to share your unique needs with me. Nothing would make me happier than to be the perfect girlfriend for you. Oh, man. Good night, Jeannie. Hey, I wonder if Yuri's tea set is still somewhere in here. Or maybe that got deleted too. It's kind of funny how Yuri took her tea so seriously. I mean, I'm not complaining because I liked it too, but I was wondering with her. Is it, true pa is it truly passion for her hobbies or is she just concerned about appearing sophisticated to everyone else? This is the problem with high schoolers. Well, I guess considering the rest of, our, of her hobbies, looking sophisticated probably isn't the biggest concern. Still, I wish you made coffee once in a while. Coffee can be nice with books too, you know. Then again, I probably could have, could have just changed that script myself. Ha ha ha, I guess I never really thought of that. Well, there's no sense thinking about it now, but if you still get to drink coffee, then that makes me a little bit jealous. I don't drink coffee, Monica. Oh, God. Uh... Basically, to get the true ending, you have to use the save load to get all the routes in one playthrough before you find Sayori in Act 1. What do you mean, Veratic? The save load? Like what? So I do Sayori's route, I load back, and then what? Hey, you remember the last poem I showed you? I mean, the one right before Yuri killed herself with all the messed up colors and stuff? That was actually a little bit more of an experiment than a poem, you could say. I was experimenting with different ways I could modify the game and run code and things like that. It almost seemed like with enough effort, I'd be able to escape from the confines of this game entirely. Sadly, I didn't really know what I was doing, so I messed up the whole thing, messed the whole thing up. And I keep trying, but I doubt you want to deal with me doing that. Besides, that was when I was getting really desperate, you know? I don't really feel that way anymore. I'm happy with where we are now. And I can tell you are too. How are you for us? Oh, I'm tired, gotta. We've been going for eight hours. I'm doing all right, though. I think Monica should continue to try and escape the game, to be honest. Back in my deb debate club days, I learned a, ho a whole lot about arguing. The problem with arguing is that each person sees their opinion as a superior one. That's the kind of stating the obvious, but it affects the way they try to get their point across. Let's say you really like a certain movie, right? If someone comes along and tells you the movie sucks because it did X and Y wrong, doesn't that make you feel kind of personally attacked? Not really. It's because by saying that, it's like they're implying that you have bad taste. And once the motion's under the picture, it's almost guaranteed that both people will be left sour. Let's talk about her. Working. I... Yeah, birthday will be next week sometime, Daru. 
Uh, next next week I will be, yeah. Okay. Okay, Daddy. Alright, Daddy. No, I haven't yet, Daddy. Okay, okay. Daddy, okay, I gotta go. Take care, baby. Good office. Bye. She likes to say bye and then ask me another question. Oh, man. Uh, then it's much more likely you're putting knowledge on the table rather than forcing it into them. If you put an active effort to keep the discussion mutual and le uh, level to follow, blah, 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 without anyone getting upset, just from disagreement. Plus, people will start to see you as an open-minded, good listener. It's a win-win, you know? Well, I guess that would be Monica's debate tip of the day. Ahaha, ah, that sounds a little silly. Thanks for listening. Oh. Just Monica. No, Dottie said her stomach was tight. Okay. Hey, you know that the book you were reading with Yuri? Portrait of whatever it was called? It's funny because I'm pretty sure that book... Actually, I don't think I should be talking about this. Sorry. Just forget I said anything. Okay, there must be some fun fact there. Why did she do that? Talking about that book, Portrait of Whatever. And then you get the special ending, okay. We can do that, Master Yen Sid. You guys wanna do that? Yes, girl, what's up? Portrait of Markov. And follow the leads? Hey, you remember the last poem I showed you? I mean, the one right before Yuri kills herself with all the messed up colors and stuff? That was actually a little bit more of it. Okay, we that's a repeat. This is a repeat. It's done, huh? It's done? We still on this game, of course we are, yeah. Every character in this game have Twitter accounts, do they? Okay, well we gotta delete her now. Right. Okay, that's all her options done. You ignorant. I got another host, Alinsha. Coming to see us. What's up, man? Thank you very much for the uh, host. How's your stream? Okay.
Shit, I didn't back it up. I start a new game, you get a quick route. I know. Yeah, I've done it before. Serious comics. See you later, man. Good luck. Dante. Okay, yeah, Natsuki, Sari, you're your back. This happens. comes back and then she does this yeah If this sounds like Monica all. to me. But I wrote you a song and I was kind of hoping that I could show it to you because I worked really, really hard on it. So, yeah. Sayori? I don't think Sayori would sound like this. But in this world of infinite choices, what will it take just to find that special day? What will it take just to find that special day? No problem, Clement. Clim Clim Clim
check the files after this? Does my pen only write bitter words for those who are dear to me? I did this, I remember this. Is it love? If I take your is it love? If I set you free? Color means you unlock these scenes. Down into a dark puddle. How can I write love into reality? If I can You miss them? On my first playthrough, I didn't miss them though. What do you call love in your reality? And in your reality, if I don't know how to love you, I'll leave you be. Okay, let's do the thing. Let's uh let's delete Monica and play the game. <laughs> 